All right, I'm just going to run a quick test. This is with the Cryo Rig H7 CPU cooler on my uh, Intel 9900K F, technically. Um, we're currently running stock um, auto clock speeds, which boosts it to 4.7 gigahertz, um, which is standard, as you can see here. Um, I haven't messed with anything in the BIOS to affect processor speed. And we're going to do a benchmark and show how hot it gets with this old um, processor, or not processor, but processor cooler. So when I've run this in the past, it's typically gone gotten up to like 90 degrees celsius after just a few minutes which is hotter than i care to have it run at <laughs> that's for sure but it, it i think the biggest problem is the the fan i think it's a 1500 rpm fan and it runs at full speed and the sink even though it's a 140 watt tdp heat sink it cannot overcome the amount of heat being thrown out at, at it from the uh, 9900K. And so you're going to see that this is going to steadily rise and get up to 90 plus C, which is higher than I would want to run it on a regular basis. Um, I don't notice clock speeds like this during gaming as much. Um, I mostly notice it during like exporting video and um, exporting photos out of like Lightroom, stuff like that. So like when I have a large batch of photos, um, it will get this hot and run this hard because um, I believe they're all using AVX workloads, which is the biggest thing that causes the temperature of the CPU to to raise significantly. So I think that's good enough to show a test. I'm sure this is a warning telling us, yeah, we've exceeded 88C. And as you can see, it's just gonna keep on rising until it throttles eventually. Hasn't throttled yet, but it will at some point. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the test. And after this, the next one we'll see is the Noctua um, D15 um, installed, and we'll see how that uh, reduces our CPU temperature. All right, I uh, just got done installing the Noctua D15, or NHD15, I believe is the full name of it, and uh, gonna run a stress test on it, see how we're doing. I believe last time it took approximately one minute for it to hit 90 degrees uh, Celsius. So let's go ahead and start it right now. Well, it's doing pretty good. Um, the first thing I notice is the fans on the Noctua are, two of them are quieter than the one that was on the H7 fan that thing sounded like a hurricane when it was uh, hitting full speed um, since this one has two and they're larger fans maybe it's uh, a little bit quieter I, I, the rpms are a little bit slower but i am noticing that we're not even hitting 70 degrees yet which you know with the old cooler it hit 70 almost instantaneously so that is quite impressive I I am quite surprised actually on how well this uh, how well this is doing. So we are just about to hit one minute, I think, and yeah, we still haven't hit 70 degrees. Um, we're st sitting solid around 68. Wow, that uh, it quite a difference. Uh, I'm impressed. So I'm going to leave it going for a little bit longer, see if it, anything changes, but it seems to be rock solid at uh, 68 degrees with 100% workload on this benchmark. Wow. Yeah, you can see here all threads slash cores um, 
our 100% capacity and um, you can see 100% utilization there and no issues at all it's just cool as a cucumber I could not be more happy with this um, I wonder if this is oh yeah this is an old one All right, well, it doesn't seem to be moving at all, so I'm gonna assume that it will run indefinitely at 68 degrees at full load at 4.7. Um, we'll probably overclock it um, and test it at five gigahertz at least and see where we're at there now that we have the ability to have some decent cooling um, and see how hot we get it then. Um, if I, I wanna try to keep the, the CPU at around 80 degrees or so um, at full workload um, so I don't kill the chip but uh, anyways uh, that's it for now